couple of weeks ago, I made a video on doing a 360 panorama with the Mavic Mini. I'm actually going to go delete that video after this, if this turns out okay, because those pictures were turning out like trash, and I'll show you why and compare why. Um, so today I did the my first time doing it on the fly, 360, and it was pretty cool and super easy. So also the first time using my screen recorder after up grading to Android 11. So I opened up the app and pressed the little airplane up in the top right, which just brings me up to a regular fly manually screen. Um, so once I take off and get to the spot, so for this, I just went up to, I think it was around a hundred feet and then went through the steps to do it on the fly function. So here we go, taking off. Jump forward. Okay, so I get up to about 100 feet. Back out. I'm going to click the on the fly. Which brings up, let's go back there a second. That happened quick. So it comes up with the plan. So I click on the fly. That's something you do when you're already at the spot. You don't have a chance to make the mission on the computer. And there's a bunch of them here, but so I just click load function. And then it comes up with a generate mission. So it's at the position I want it to be. And this was just straight above my driveway, nothing special. Um, so when I click generate mission, it'll put all the parameters in for where it is. And then the next step is just hit the play button. The only weird thing that happened here is when it generates the mission, the little map box down here becomes completely useless for the rest of the flight. Um, so it's just a glitch, probably just like the weak signal, um, but I can live with it for 20 bucks. So then I hit play and it will start aligning and taking the 23 photos. This is all the software doing it. I am not doing anything at this point, but holding the remote control, looking in the air and watching this big hawk come out of nowhere and start circling the drone. But everything worked out okay. And right here he is. Turns and comes past. We'll see him in the pictures. So it goes through and takes 23 photos like this. I'll just jump ahead. And it's doing this in, what, a minute and a half, two minutes. Finishing the photos. And when it takes the photos, I don't know how hard this to be able to see this screen recording small, but it keeps the uh, exposure value at zero unless you go in and change it. Um, I don't know if you can change it doing the on the fly, but it's fine because it's doing all the work. So mission accomplished. Back out of that. So now it took these 23 photos. So I like to use now the Microsoft image composite editor, which is free. So we're going to import images. And it should be 23 photos. Next. And while this is running, I also, uh, I'm paying for the Photoshop $10 a month package, which at first I was hesitant to do, but since I've done it, it's just made flying the drone so much more fun. Um, you can do things with it. So here we are. That's what it came up with. Uh, everything looks good. So with these little arrows here, you can move it side to side. 
to where you want the center point of the photo to be when it opens up. So kind of looking into the sun, but let's go to the bird. So I've got the bird in one of the photos. That's cool. All right, so then I do spherical, just next. And this is great software, it's fast. Okay, so there's the picture. Um, just for this, I'm just gonna crop down just to smooth out the top. The rest I'm gonna leave the same. Hit next. And for this, I'll just leave the quality at 75. And we're gonna export. And let's just put it on the desktop. We'll call it test stitch. Okay, let's put it in the test folder and save. Now we're done with that. So the next thing I do is go into Photoshop. We're going to open that same photo. Test stitch. And if you forgot to crop it on that last step, you can crop it in here. No big deal. As it opens up. Okay, so right away, I'm gonna go new, make a new canvas, and let's do 6,000 by 3,000 pixels, and we'll just leave it at 72. Okay, so we'll go to our test stitch. I'm just gonna grab this go up to the new tab and drop it on the canvas. So that's zoomed in way far. So now I'm just gonna control minus so I can see the edges. Go to edit, transform, scale, and I'm gonna unlink it up here. I'm also gonna go to view, can't do that yet. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring the sides in so the sides match. The bottom in to the bottom matches. Now I'm just going to my cursor tool. Saves it there. So we're going to go to view, new guide layout. Now all this stuff I've found on other videos, I'm just putting this into one just to show the, uh, the coolness of the on the fly 360. So the center line, let's go back to what I did there. Um, I made two rows, doesn't matter how many columns, but two rows. So I have a line going straight through the center of the photo. So now I'm gonna control plus, 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 plus. Go back to transform, scale. I'll make sure it's unlocked. I'm gonna drag this down so the horizon is right on that center line. If it's not, the photo is gonna look like this. I did several photos that looked like they were in a well compared to the flat horizon. Arced horizon, flat horizon. It's a lot more appealing. Okay, so the horizon is right on the center line. Cool. Go back to view. Clear those guides. Now I'm going to control minus just so I can see everything. Now I'm going to control click down here on my layer that selects my photo. Now you want to go up and to select and select inverse that selects the area above the sky. Go back to select, modify, 
expand, and I've seen this on other people's videos, you want to expand that open space by five pixels so that the next step works smoothly. Okay. I believe it's shift backspace. Brings up the content aware. And we're going to leave that checked, normal, 100%. We're going to hit OK. And this will interpret what it thinks that blank space should look like. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And for what we're doing here, that's pretty good to me. Looks like we got the bird twice. Awesome. Now I'm going to go to Layer, Flatten Image. And at this point, you can go, if you want to do your color adjustments, exposure, anything like that, I would do that at this point. So now we're going to save it. In our test folder, we'll call it test stitch one as a JPEG. And just for speed, let's bring that down to medium. Saved. So now you want to go to a website called theexifer.net. And we're going to upload that video, or not the video, the test stitch one. And we're going to hit exif me. This lets you, you can select where the photo was taken. We'll put it in the middle of the ocean. But you're going to scroll down. You want to change the make and model of the camera to a Rico Theta S. This way, when you upload it to Facebook, Facebook recognizes that as a 360 camera. So when you're done, scroll all the way down, go Exafine. And now I'm going to right click on Download Me. Save link as, and I can put it back in my test folder. Call it test stitch two, or let's call it final. Test stitch final. It's when it's done downloading, go ahead and remove this file. Now we can go into Facebook. And I have the privacy set for just me, so I can play around here. So we'll go in here, select Test Stitch Final, Open, Post. And we have our 360. The flat horizon and a little big brother searching around. Hope that helps.